I grew up surrounded by a loving family and good friends, an ordinary family, and an ordinary me, in terms of my look, academic, and sports. But I think I was very fortunate to have good people around me. Maybe that's why I have a tendency to trust people too much. Because of this, I often hear people call me naive or mystical. This story is about my pathetic mother-in-law, who bullied a trusting daughter-in-law. My name is Mary. I'm 31 and work as a salesman. My husband Jake and I just got married a year ago, so I still feel like a newlywed then. Let's have a baby! I used to say, but honestly, I was still enjoying our newlywed life. Jake's parents were still together. And lived about 20 minutes ride from our apartment. Diane, Jake's mom, used to invite us to dinner at the house, and we enjoying a family dinner once a month. My friends worried that, isn't it too much for you to go to your in-laws' house once a month? But Tom, Jake's dad, was a good conversationer, and Diane was sweet, so it was not at all bothersome for me. Besides. Diane seems to be the type who preferred to work alone in the kitchen, so I was always treated like a guest. I used to happily join appellatives with Jake and Tom, until the dinner was served, so it was easier than preparing dinner at home. There was only one thing that concerned me. <coughs> that day, we were again at the in-laws' house for a family dinner. But when I tasted the chicken soup Diane made, I groaned involuntarily. "What's wrong, Mary?" Jake looked at me curiously. "Ah, uh, <clears throat> just, just that I have never had a celery in chicken soup at my parents, so I thought it was interesting. It's delicious, Diane. Is it? Thank you. There's plenty more. Ah,、oh, great." I struggled to smile back at Diane, who was looking happy. One more bowl of this soup would stir up my blood pressure. That's how salty the chicken soup was. I glanced at Jake and Tom, but they seemed enjoying the soup. This is a normal taste of home cooking for them. That day too, I accepted. I forced myself to eat up the soup that contained so much sodium that it could dissolve. Apparently, my in-laws seems to be like intense flavors. Diane's cooking was as salty as seawater at times, and as sweet as condensed milk at other times. The first time that I tried it, I almost spit it out. But the other members of the family ate it as normal as any other day. I was astonished with their preferred flavoring. I felt bad to leave food, so I usually ate it all. But it must have been too much that my stomach used to get upset. The impact of eating such an intense flavored food on a daily basis was my great concern for their health. I had consulted with my nutritionist friend, and I've been collecting recipes and pamphlets. But there was no way a new daughter-in-law could say, "Your cooking is too rich in flavor. Please modify recipes." By the way, my home cooking was exactly seasoned according to the recipe. I thought it was flavorous for Jake. I used to ask him, "Is it good?" Constantly. Even time I did. Whatever you cook is delicious, he replied sweetly. But if we grew up eating such rich food, I couldn't believe he was being honest. Regardless, I prioritized our health and cook with normal seasonings. Then there was one more thing that worried me. Diane served salad food. The rolls of bread on my plate. Were dry and hard ones. Sometimes, partially rotten fruits were served for dessert. I discreetly removed the parts I couldn't eat, 
but I was worried that my in-laws were to get food poisoning sooner or later. Cookies for your snack, Mary. Those cookies that Yun gave me were expired at six months ago. Jake realized, and Mom, those cookies are expired. Alerted, Diane replied, "Oh no, I am so careless." I was relieved that she laughed it aside. But then I shivered when I found the same box of cookies mixed in the snack bag she gave me on the next visit. I have seen this symptom before. The time my grandma got dementia. What to do? Diane, still in her fifties. I doubted she had dementia. I wanted to discuss with Jake about the too rich flavored food, and Diane may be showing signs of dementia, but I was too afraid that it was too much for him. Then one day, a small miracle happened to us. I became pregnant. I'm finally going to be a dad. Is it a boy or girl? Jake stroked my belly every day with excitement. When are we going to tell our parents? Should we wait until the end of first trimester? Well, doctor only confirmed the heartbeat, but I want them to help me in case something happens. So I will tell them after the twelve weeks checkup. I guess we just have to wait and see. I can wait to tell everyone. I think my mom's gonna cry when she hears the news. <laughs> You're right. I imagine Diane congratulating me with tear in her eyes. I felt warmth in my heart. I had been so excited about my long-awaited pregnancy that many things had completely slipped out of my mind. The following weekend, when I saw Diane's chicken soup on the table. I finally realized that there was a big problem. If I ate her over-seasoned food, it might affect my baby. The pregnancy books I'd been reading said high blood pressure and diabetes can affect the condition of pregnancy and childbirth. Stale breads and all the other things that might be expired could be okay for me, but might affect my baby. The thought made me anxious. I couldn't start eating. Oh no, Mary, you haven't eaten at all. I hope it wasn't too bad for your taste. Diane looked at my plate and frowned. No, no, it's not that. She's tired and doesn't have much of an appetite. Jake thought it was morning sickness and rushed to save me. I see. Are you working too hard, Mary? Don't push yourself too much. Thank you. Tom was kind, but Diane's face remained grim. I felt guilty for leaving the food and lying to them. But after everyone else finished their meal, Diane offered me a large brownie with an ice cream on top, along with a cup of tea. Have some sweets at least. I'm sure it will relax you. Thank you so much. What a thoughtful person. I thought I would at least have a bite. But lately, I got heartburn after eating sweets. I saw Jake got a smaller piece without an ice cream. I whispered to Jake so that Diane couldn't hear from the kitchen. Jake, can I switch with yours? Huh? Oh, sure. He gladly passed me his plate, and I cut a thin piece with my fork. It was moist and soft. I put it in my mouth and downed with tea. Huh? <laughs> This brownie is a little hard. Jake had to cut his in half, and when he tried to put it in his mouth, no, 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 no! Diane screamed as she burst out of the kitchen. My heart jumped a bit at the sudden outburst. Jake looked equally puzzled when Diane took his brownie from his hand. Why are you having Mary's brownie? I gave it to her. Doesn't matter who eats it. Yes, it does. This one is outdated. What? Whoops! An unexpected bombshell silenced us all. Confused by her revelation, I asked, "That brownie was old. I 
didn't notice, cause the ice cream was melting on top. My words didn't ease the situation. Instead, it only confirmed that there was malice in Diane's reaction. In other words, my mom was trying to hide the staleness by adding ice cream on top. Isn't that right, mom? Jake asks Diane without any emotion. The calmness of his rage made him even more fearsome. Diane seemed to know it, and she was quickly trying to make things right. No, that's not it. It's old, but it's a big and still tasty. So I wanted Mary to have it. Then why did you so forcefully stop me from eating it? You gave it to Mary even though you knew it wasn't safe to eat. No way. Even I, a slow learner, finally realized, and I felt a shiver run down my spine. Well, I mean, you have been feeding me stale food and giving me expired snacks. All was intentional, wasn't it? What? What's going on, honey? Tom was glaring at Diane like a devil. No, not on purpose. I just happened to have some left over, and I didn't want to waste them, so I gave to Mary. That's what you call on purpose. I can't think of any good reason to make someone else eat bad food that you don't want. But she's not really our family. She's an outsider, so why not give her the old food, right? You came to my family too. But you had never been treated like that. No, but Diane was banging on a table in panic. As I watched her, my heart dropped. There was no sign of Diane, who I loved so much. I was deeply disappointed and wondered if it was all an illusion. As much as I believe she was a kind and nice person. I felt even more disgusted. Now that I knew I had been betrayed, she looked like a distressed demon making excuses. Then there was one more thing that bothered me. Was it all harmless? Could it be also on purpose that all your food tasted so intense? What? What? Tom and Jake were aghast. Oh. Diane's expression said. Oh shoot! With a devil-like expression, Jake grabbed my bowl of chicken soup. Don't, Jake! Ignoring Diane's cry, Jake took a spoonful. Then he spit it out. Ew! <coughs> It's like seawater. Tom too tried a sandwich I didn't touch, and scolded. Mary. Were you always eating up this kind of food? Yes, I thought this was the normal taste here. You and Jake ate it too, so. That's because ours was normal. I see. So that's how it was. Seeing me realize all that, Jake's shoulders drooped, as if he had lost all his strength. But. How could you not realize? Was it something more than just a bad flavor? She has even given you expired snacks. Because I thought she had gotten dementia. D- dementia. Diane's mouth twitched. A daughter-in-law whom she hated to the point to harasses, thought her mother-in-law who was in only her fifties had dementia, and even pitied. Was a huge insult to her. How pathetic! You're so sweet. You put up with her because you thought she was sick. Jake assured me with a soothing voice. On the other hand, you, Mom. That's right. I don't even want to know. You were bullying such a good girl who trusted you so. Tom and Jake said, "I never thought." Diane was that kind of person either. That's why I have consulted many people. Like, Diane's taste buds are off, and I am worried about her health. 
and Diane still in her fifties, but she is showing dementia symptoms. Huh? Many people. Her expression changed quickly. She never thought that her misdeed had been spread. Like my parents, my friends, people at work. Oh, they were all helpful. They gave me all kind of tips and pamphlets. Here. I pulled pamphlets out of my bag, and piled them up. I had been carrying them around with the intention of talking to Tom and Jake someday. I never thought it would come handy in this way. Whoa, you were really worried about her. The men unfolded the pamphlet, as if they were moved by my action. Of course, Diane was upset. You're terrible. I am not sick. It's you who are terrible. Unlike you, she has a pure heart, so she was sincerely concerned about you. Shut up! Shut up! I didn't like her from the beginning. She became defiant. She pointed and glared at me like a demon. My beloved son, was taken away by a dumb-faced woman like her. She didn't even notice the harassment. Are you the dumb? I wish for a beautiful and successful woman who makes me proud to walk around with in public. Diane, you are an idiot to not see what an amazing woman Jake married. You were being fooled by her. What the? In front of my eyes, my in-laws were having a fierce argument. Ah,、uh, seriously, I was hated by Diane. Even though I knew in my head, it was painful to be in someone I trusted. As I slumped, Jake whispered, "Why didn't you tell me before our marriage, Mom? If I had known, I..." Jake, Diane looked hopeful. I knew it. He's on my side. Right. If I had known, I would have cut ties. Jake, ignoring Diane's despair, Jake held me tightly in his arms. I'm sorry, Mary. I didn't realize how much crap you were going. Jake, I'm sorry too. I didn't recognize her hideous intention. He, hideous. Diane's eyes twitched. She had never expected to be told such a thing by me, whom she had looked down on. I married you because you were so pure. Don't worry, we'll never come here again. Wait, Jake, I won't allow it. You are terrible, mother. I'll never let you see your child. A child? Are you? She looked at my belly. Now she knows. But if she had noticed earlier when I had no appetite. It might have had a different outcome. She was too preoccupied with her scheme. Let's go, Mary. Yeah. I took the hand Jake offered and stood up slowly. Wait, I'm sorry, Jake. It was just a small indiscretion. Diane was rushing to grab him, but Jake dismissed her coldly. I am not the one you should be apologizing to. Ah,、uh. Diane glanced at me. Her eyes were full of disgust. I didn't want to forgive someone who obviously carried a garage against me. So I opened my mouth before she could say anything. I had a great trust in you, and you betrayed me. I can no longer trust you for the rest of my life. I can't let such a person be with my precious child. Goodbye. No. Diane collapsed in anguish. We left without batting an eye, with Tom seeing us. We would never come here again. It's strange for me to say this, but if only Diane could have cherished our relationship, she could have lived a happily life as a grandmother, surrounded by her grandchildren. What a fool! Later, when I told my parents and friends who had get me their support, 
You finally realized. They were either stunned or relieved. Apparently, everyone but me was aware that I was being booed, but they couldn't tell me because I was truly worried about Diane. At least, they were listening to me and collecting pamphlets, so that I could prove when I finally realized one day. I felt ashamed and embarrassed that my face was burning. In fact, thanks to the large amount of materials that everyone had given to me, I was able to prove that I had been seriously concerned. Thanks to them, Jake and Tom were completely on my side. I realized once again that I had been truly blessed by the people around me. About two years later, I have been busy taking care of my little son. Today is his first birthday. Birthday cake, fried chicken, and some other stuff. I am hard at work preparing dishes I'm not accustomed to making. Jake has been a great dad by playing with her son and changing his diaper. In the middle of it, I got a call from Tom. He was invited to the birthday party. I picked up the phone without hesitation, thinking he might have something to ask me.、Uh, hello, Mary? The caller, who's making sweet voice and checking my mood, was of course not Tom. Even after two years, I know it's Diane. After we cut ties, we moved to a new place far away from her and only told Tom. I also blocked Diane's phone number. And had my number erased from her phone as well. Thanks to Jake and Tom being shielded between us, I didn't get her unwelcomed visit at the hospital when I gave birth. I've been able to live a really peaceful life. And now she wants to ruin it. Just the thought of her on the other end of the phone, I get goosebumps. Where is Tom? He's in the bathroom right now. Hey, isn't it my grandson's birthday today? I don't think Tom told her, but she might have noticed him discreetly preparing gifts. Jake says something is wrong from my tone of voice. He gestures to take over the phone with a worried look on his face, but I give him a thumbs up. I continue the call. I am too, a mother now, an innocent, lovely wife. Is a thing of the past. Listen, Mary, I seriously feel bad about what happened. I was wrong to do such mean things. I regret very much. Huh. <sighs> so I want to see my grandson soon. I'll buy him lots of cute clothes and toys. See? Okay. Well. I don't need you to hide needles in or bug the toys. So, no, thank you. No, I wouldn't do such a horrible thing. I mean, you fed me all those disgusting stuff. You're exaggerating. It wasn't that bad, was it? Too much salt, sugar, and mold. Too much of any of it would have destroyed my health. But, but, I mean it. I really regret. I'm sure you were kind enough that you would understand. You're right. I'm often told that I am kind. Yes, you are. But it's not that I'm kind. I'm just naive and trust people too much. If someone betrays me, I will never trust them again. Huh. <gasps> So you will never gain my trust, ever again, and I will not forgive you. I'll never let you see my precious son. Wait, Mary. Hey, what are you doing, Tom? I can hear Tom and Diane yelling at each other on the other end of the line. I quietly press the end button. Sorry for that. But you're getting stronger, Mary. Jake sighs in relief. He places his hands on my shoulder in encouragement. Of course, I'm his mother. 
My son looks content lying in his crib, and when he sees me, he flaps his hand happily. In response, I pick him up and rub my cheek against his. His body is small and soft. His mouth has a slight scent of milk. His dark eyes reflect in me. The presence of my son gives me an overflow of protective maternal feelings. For my son, I can be an angel or a demon. I've outgrown my gentle but naive wife. Oh, it smells so good! It's about time the birthday cake is ready in the oven. <laughs> my innocent son happily replies, to which we smile broadly. The day when I was oblivious of the malice of others, I was carefree and happy. But that was because of the people who protected me. So now it is my turn to protect my family. I'm adamant to be stronger and stronger, so that these happy days would continue for a long time.